Hi guys, welcome back to the Shannon Show. So today's video is going to be a review of The Perfect Date, which premiered on Netflix today. So obviously it has three big stars in it. It has Noah Centino from, from All The Boys I've Ever Loved Before. It's got Laura Murano from Disney Channel and it's got Camilla Mendes from Riverdale. So three big stars and that was basically the marketing for this film. So a quick summary of the film. The story is about Brooks who lives with his dad and they're kind of working class, low income. His dad used to be a successful writer but isn't anymore so hence them not having much money. And his dream is to go to Yale but it's unlikely that he's going to get a scholarship so obviously he needs to raise money. So to get some quick cash he takes out the token, the token rich kid's cousin out for you know some money and through that he basically comes up with this idea to make this app called The Stand-In where he's basically um, an escort and he's just selling his company to these women for money to raise money to go to Yale and within this he kind of after after dating the after dating the rich kid's cousin or well, after going out with the rich kid's cousin on the paid date they become friends, who is Laura Morano Celia. They become friends and she kind of introduces him into the kind of rich world because she's rich and privileged or her family are well off. So she introduces him to that world and then he starts basically living a double life and he starts leaving his, his poor friends behind him and there's this whole dilemma of, you know, to be successful, should you lie about who you are and then all of this and then but he wants to be with the super popular rich girl and he she doesn't know that he's poor because he went along with the lie that he was rich to impress her and then him and Celia start getting close and then they have a falling out and then he confesses to the girl that he really likes that he's poor and then they break up and then they get together and that's basically that basically sums it up so not much really going on really i think it's just kind of like a typical teen story and there's a poor boy and he wants to be rich and he goes around living this double life and then the end the moral of the story is you know never try and be who you aren't and remember where you came from all of that malarkey and then he doesn't he basically gets a chance to go to yale but then decides he's going to go to a public college um instead i guess that's his happy ending so yeah, it's kind of a simple plot, like halfway through the film, you kind of already twig what's going to happen. And I feel like you can twig, you kind of know what's going to happen in every single film. But it was just so obviously done that it was almost unbelievable. Like, it was just so obvious what was going to happen. Personally, I thought that I didn't think the film was bad. Incredibly bad. But I didn't think it was good either. Like, I don't even think this film is worth a Teen Choice Award. I feel like they just literally just, they're like, okay, we're going to put these three stars in a movie and we're going to chuck some money at it. And it's probably going to do decent because it's got these three stars in it. And they're probably right. But at this point, it's just like, Netflix, just give me some money because I could make such a better story than this. Like, so Netflix, if you're watching this, just throw some money at me and I can make like a great series. Like, the amount of money that they're just throwing around for all of these products is ridiculous to be coming up with. And it, I wouldn't even call this film mediocre. I'd say it was a below average film. To be throwing money at below average films, like I'd take a quarter of what was thrown at this film. I'd take a quarter of the budget made out of this film and make something 10 times greater than this. So. You know, give me, give me an email, Netflix, if you're watching this. So yeah, I guess the editing, cinematography, I couldn't really fault it. It was simple, I did the job, I couldn't really fault it. Um, the characters, honestly, I found them all really annoying. Except for Camilla's character, even though her role was really small, despite being marketed a lot. Cheeky. Yeah, all of them were annoying. All of them were annoying. And I tell you what really annoyed me about this story is just how unrealistic it is. I come from a low income family and I just, if I had the opportunity to go to a really good university and I could raise the money for it, I'm going to that bitch. So it's just like this whole thing of like staying true to your, you know, 
staying true to who you are, you know, it's not about, you know, faking it until you make it. In the real world, that's what you have to do. Like, the whole thing of, oh, I don't want to go into Yale if I have to pretend to be somebody else to get into it. Everybody lies at their interviews. This is like common knowledge. You lie at your interview and then you just do whatever you want to do once you get in. And everybody knows, everybody knows if you want to get somewhere, you need to know people who know people. And most of the time, you know, this whole thing of success, most of the time it's not about hard work. It's about, like, you know, just being born into money and knowing the people who are born into money and getting them to give you your money or getting them to hook you up with people who can give you the money that you need to be successful. So if I was Brooks, I would have gone, gone my ass to Yale buddied up with some rich people and you know founded a company with them or some shit you know come knowledge like just things like that it's just it's just seemed very silly to me and very unrealistic and also also him and his dad are living it up shabby and his mum is out here with the rich plastic surgeon she isn't giving him no money she isn't telling her man, hey, look, you know, I've got a son, you know, he needs to, he wants to go to college, you know, could you part with some money since you're so rich? It's just not realistic. Either either his mum is a is a deadbeat, or it's just not very realistic, or she's just very selfish and her man is very stingy. It just wasn't very realistic to me. And like his friend, his friend is just it's his friend being black and gay just felt like a little bit token tokenism to me like he was just there but we didn't really see him much and like we didn't really see him you know being romantic with anyone so it's just kind of like oh you know let's fill the quota you know let's 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 put a black gay guy in it you know just to fill the the representation quota it just felt like you know a last minute thought like oh let's just let's put this in here to be relevant and then also, rich girl, Celia, she decides she wants to go to like a normal college, she doesn't want to go to an Ivy League college. But my thing is, it doesn't matter where she goes because her parents are successful people. They've got money and they know people who could get her into, you know, the job that she wants. Her parents knew the president of Yale. So if she wants to go into the job market, I'm sure they, they can connect up with people. So it's kind of just like, I don't know what they were trying to do there because that's just a thing that annoyed me as well because it doesn't matter what university that she goes to because her parents are so well connected she's not really going to have an issue getting a job after it despite not going to an Ivy League university or college if you get what I mean and another thing that annoyed me is that you know they gave Camilla such a they gave Camilla's character Shelby such a small part in the film yeah I've, and personally i feel like i felt i feel like shelby and brooks made a cuter couple i don't know so it was it's just a bit like of course they didn't work out like of course of course see of course you know they pair him up with someone else it's like of course and you know and honestly i want more from my girl camilla because they're always like putting you know in riverdale she's you know the rich princess and in this film, she's the rich princess again. Like we need to stop we need to stop typecasting my girl Camilla. Okay. All right. So yeah, rating. I'd probably give it a two out of five. Honestly, if you're watching this and you haven't watched it yet, don't bother. Like it's only an hour and a half, and thank God that it's only an hour and a half. But it's just not. I'd recommend just starting another series on Netflix or something else. I think the writing was really, really simple, really basic. And yeah, it's just like these stories are getting really boring, to be honest. These teen stories are getting really boring. Like I'd rather watch season, season two of, of Riverdale again, even though it was absolutely horrendous. So yeah, I feel like Netflix needs to come better with the content, with the teen writings. I think, obviously, I feel like this was written by an old man. You need to hire younger writers 
um, and younger, better writers. Yeah, and I feel like we need to get new talent in. It gets boring seeing the stars again. Obviously, bring Camilla back if you're going to put her in a better role, um, give her more range. But I feel like a lot of the time, once there's one big hit, they always recycle people and that gets boring and I feel like they should bring in new talent for new things. So yeah, let me know what you think. Think I think the only the only reason why I would watch this film is if I was a Noah Siento stan, which I'm not. So I probably wouldn't watch this film. So if you are not a Noah Siento stan and you haven't watched this film, there's probably no point in watching it. So if you watched the film, let me know if you if you think I'm being a bit too harsh. Let me know if you liked it. Um, yeah, let me know if you thought it was a big waste of time <laughs> to watch. Yeah, I'm just th I just need a, a, a little bit. I I just need you know something a bit better from Netflix next time, please. It was just a very typical story, and it was just very annoying. The whole romanticizing of like coming from a low income background. Maybe it could be realistic for a small minority of people, but for most of us from low income backgrounds, that couldn't run for us. That would be, we'd, we'd have to really reevaluate things once we came out because, yeah. So yeah, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you thought it was realistic or not. Let me know if it annoyed you. Let me know if you actually loved the film. So let me know in the comments. And thank you for everyone who subscribed to my channel on my last video. I did hit 170 subscribers, so my next short-term goal is to get to 180 subscribers. So if you could subscribe to my channel, you know, that would just be, that would just make my whole day and my whole week. So yeah. Till next time, guys. Bye.